Okay, so I'm not sure if you can see that design, how well that's coming out on the paper, but that is what my new box for the back of the Tundra is going to look like. Should be 20 inches high. Actually, just a touch higher than that because I'm going to put a piece of 2x2 two two underneath the box to support it on either side. So you can see I got it all marked out here. This part right here, uh, this is this is where the seat goes, where do you see these X's? So the, the back of the seat of the Tundra will sit right in this X here. And then it's gonna come towards the front of the Tundra just by a couple inches. And on this section, it's uh, eight inches across there. So on that section there, uh, I'm gonna have a pad get a pad made for it and uh, put it on and that'll be a back support for my wife when she comes with me. So as you can see I got some of the panels already pre-marked. This will be the very top of it and this will be the hatch for it. You can see the hatch. Use my other finger. A little bit more appealing, I suppose. So yeah, one sheet of plywood. So if I've taken my measurements correctly, out there on the skidoo, this should just fit in nicely. The overall outside uh, di uh, dimensions will be 26 and 3 quarter inches on the bottom, from bottom to bottom. On the very back of the Tundra, the box will come up 10 inches. Then I'll angle up with the back hatch, which is gonna be 19, uh, what is it? 19 and just shy, 19 and a half inches. Uh, 1 16th of an inch shy of 19 and a half. This one here is gonna be 13 and 1 8 inches, the top part of it. The back part where the pad is going to go for a back support for my wife will uh, be 8 by 16 and 3 quarter. And then this part down here, this will fit over the top of the seat. The seat will come underneath this. Alright. And that will be uh, 12 by 16 and 3 quarter with an outside diameter measurement. So that's it. That is what my box is going to look like. And as you can see, I'm going to put a I'm going to hatch when this hatch lifts up in this direction. I'm going to have a couple little legs that drops down and a hook onto the back the back wall of the box to make it a level platform where I can put my Coleman stove and uh, the propane cylinder for my winter adventures and boil-ups. Of course, I'll have to have an open fire up there too, but for boiling the kettle and quickly cooking up some food, I'll be taking a coma stove. It'll fit nicely into the, uh, into the box. So that's her. All I gotta do is cut it out, put it together, and paint it. It'll go uh, flat black. This is how the gates looked when I first built them. But they were too fortified. The rabbits didn't feel comfortable going in. Even with the snares off the gates, I wasn't getting any rabbits going in feeding on the birch tips. I used the same type of pens in Nova Scotia and it worked really good. But here on the island, there's so much natural cover for the rabbits. They just, for whatever reason, didn't feel comfortable going into those pans. So I opened up the sides and took some brush away from the back end corner to allow the rabbits to have better access. I kept the same amount of snares. I kept the four snares there, but I put two running parallel to the tips and one on either end. This seemed to work out really good because after the very first night, we had a rabbit. 
I would like to add here on the island of Newfoundland we don't have rabbits. What we have are snowshoe hares and arctic hare. Everybody here refers to them as rabbits. I just need to get this rabbit untied so I can get him out of the snare and then rework the snare and, and reset it. I think I'm going to give this rabbit to Wayne Alexander for helping me build my box. This one plus another rabbit that I catch. I'm just working the snare now and and uh, loading the snare, putting a couple little bends in, a couple of key bends to, to really help that loaded snare close quickly. I like to do uh, two to three wraps around the pole that I'm tying the snare to and then a minimum of three wraps around the wire to secure it. And then I just put a couple of guide sticks in, making sure that the snare is dead center between the two guide sticks and of course anybody who's ever seen any of my videos and my steering videos I always got to have my little chin lifter in there and I like to put the chin lifter approximately halfway between the bottom of the snare and the, the ground or the snow in this case yeah I really need to get that box built this Rubbermaid container is working good however it's not, it's not what I want on the back of my Tundra. Here you can hear the rattling of the cheap Gorillapod mount that I was using. Now I've put the GoPro for the very first time on the bumper of my Skidoo. I really like this angle, however it makes it seem like I'm going a lot faster than what I really am. But for whatever reason it really seems nice and smooth. Okay now I realize that I lost the lid on that Rubbermaid container. So I gotta turn around and go look for the lid. Yep, I really, really need to get this box made. Okay, we're coming up to the lid there now. And now I'm back to the spot where I turned around to go find my lid. And in the short time it took me to go back and find my lid, the weather started getting bad. I'd like to take this time to give a big shout out to Mink Trapping Paddy. He's a trapper over in Ireland. And if you guys haven't checked out his channel, you should check him out. That's Mink Trapping Paddy, and I'll put a link to his channel in the description below. All right, down here with Wayne. No. You know him from the rabbit snare videos. <laughs> and we're going to start putting the box together. Very small box. <laughs> Wayne's got to set up here. Fire going over there. Nice and warm. Perfect. What do you think, Wayne? Oh, she's looking pretty good there, Charlie. Looking pretty good. Now, hopefully, uh, your measurements are correct. <laughs> we put it all together. We're going to go up and give it a try, but we uh, decided to uh, keep her going with the build. We feel confident enough that it's going to fit. And if it doesn't, oh well, boy, will I be crying. Well, I'll uh, have to exchange. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a nice design because this part here, when I get the, the board across this one, I'm gonna get a pad made up for Karen for her back. Backwards. 
and the, the screws heat will go in underneath this. Hey Charlie, what's next on our agenda? I guess we gotta do the M1 first, eh? Yep. Right on, we'll do it. You, you got her, finally got her done. That's all you need is a good paint job now. And she should be ready to go. And get the hinges. And get the hinges, yes, some good hinges. So paint well, her up. Thank you so much, Wayne, for all your help. That's no uh, problem, boy. She, uh, we left a little bit of uh, overhang down here. I don't know if you guys can see it for lifting up the box, that's all. Instead of putting hardware onto it, keep her streamlined as I can. And that's just the fault in the in the in the wood there, you know. But that's okay. Once that gets all painted up flat black. And this is gonna be the cushion for the Yeah, and this the is where, where the 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 pad will go for, for my wife. And the seat will fit in underneath of it. And that we took it up and we put it on the skidoo and it fits absolutely perfectly, eh? Perfect. Charlie was yeah. snug as a bug. Yeah, we uh, we did good with our measurements and with our cutting and uh, did it all with skill saw. If you're cutting with a skill saw why we did a pretty good job. <laughs> yes, that <I> guarantee you. <laughs> and I'm going to have uh, legs put onto it so that'll come up level and then I'll be able to put the coma stove onto it and the legs will will come down from here and support on this. Right? And this is what the box looks like. Might as well take that right off. And that's what the box looks like on the inside. Good sized box. Takes up the full uh, full uh, compartment cargo area on the back of the skidoo. I'm happy with that, Wayne. Oh, that's great. I'm glad, I'm glad you're happy with it, Charlie. Thanks, thanks for your help, buddy. Yeah, hopefully we'll see it on your machine next year. Next year? <laughs> I got a funny feet. What time is it now? I, I get down and I get some paint. I'm going to sand it a little bit first. I'll go down and do a good job of sanding. Get it all sanded right nice the way I want. Then paint. Now this is what you call service. I come down to his garage, nice, hot, warm, heated, electric garage. To get the box built, he used his uh, brad nailer. So we didn't even have to, uh, to swing a hammer. And he's sending me up to the house with a dozen, I want to say homemade eggs, but it's fresh eggs. Fresh eggs. From my hens. <laughs> from, from his hens, from Wayne's hens. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, oh, wicked. That's wicked, funny. sir. So this is what the the box looks like on the back of the on the back of the tundra. <clears throat> it fits absolutely perfectly. Got a little lip overhang for lifting the, the box. I still need to get the hinges for the for the hatch here. <clears throat> and this part right here, you can see how it fits in you know, underneath the uh, skidoo. And I'm just going to get a pad to come up here for my wife's back and that will give her a nice back support and that's the, that's the design of her, that's what she looks like. <clears throat> the Tundra Box. <clears throat> See if I can't give you guys a better, and that will be painted flat back too, eh? So. That's what she's going to look like. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I ran a, a, a bead of clear uh, caulking all around on the inside of the box, on the seams, all the way up in the back and across on the top. <clears throat> so now the only thing I gotta do is uh, go down and, and get some sandpaper. I'm gonna sand it. And when the sanding is done, I'm going to start painting. And I am going to paint the inside of the box. I was going to paint it a lighter color, but I don't really know if I need to. Uh, I'll just paint it black, I suppose. Buy one can and, and do everything with it. I'm liking the new box. I think it's really going to serve me well in the years to come. I guess 
on the next video you'll see me load up that box with the propane stove and some grub and go out on a tundra adventure maybe even put some ice fishing poles in and maybe do a little bit of ice fishing so here's a new box I got a couple of little latches that holes down the end of the hatch and that works really well to keep everything secure so this is what the new box looks like I got foam down underneath the legs it fits absolutely perfectly it is so super tight and secure just a little tiny gap in there between the seat. I don't know if you can see it. And this is where the uh, back cushion is going to go for my wife. Give her some nice back support. <clears throat> Only thing I got in right now is a pair of uh, snowshoes. I did screw up. I, uh, I went with clear silicone and I ran caulking all along the seams. What I should have done is I should have painted it first. Then I went down to the dollar store and got this black or grayish mat. And I uh, I just cut it out to, to drop in there to keep things quiet when they're when they're in there. So that's that's the box right there. And uh, I gotta say that I'm I'm quite pleased and, and quite happy with it. Back to the garage now and I'm using the skidoo lift. This little uh, skidoo lift, I tell you, is really saving my back. I'm very, very pleased with it. It only takes a few seconds to place it underneath the machine and get it attached to the side of the skidoo. And once you do that, I can guarantee you it really, really reduces the weight of the skidoo. Makes it a whole lot easier, even with the box on the back, to maneuver the skidoo around and get everything in place. Yeah, I need to scrape the ice off the garage floor. It's getting a little rough there. Now I'm just placing the dollies underneath the skis of the skidoo. And this is kind of the way I uh, put my skidoo to bed. Every night, I always bring it in, put it at, right behind the garage door at first. And when it cools off, I'll move it back and position alongside the wall. But as you can see, that dolly sure comes in handy. I would like to thank everybody for watching the video and subscribing to my channel. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, and I'll see you on my next adventure.